to Hello everyone, this is Megan Meehan representing Alexander German Productions and today I wanted to read you a couple of experts from this lovely book. Now this book is written by Ephraim German who was actually Alexander's father. Now Alexander's father worked for many years and still works as a manager at a vet clinic in Brooklyn. And so, based on his experiences working at this vet clinic, he wrote this book titled Smiles, Tears, and Thoughts uh, Behind the Front Desk at the Vet's Office. So, what's interesting about this book is that the uh, vet's office that he works in actually is a veterinary clinic, it also offers grooming services, and it offers some boarding services. So, it's kind of an all-inclusive all uh, service for pets. And they deal with primarily cats and dogs, and occasionally some other kinds of animals. So this book is just full of these really incredible, often really hilarious stories involving um, his experiences at this vet clinic. So I think today I'm going to read you a couple of little sections from this book. And the first one is called Give Me My Cat. And I think that this one is really outlandish, but also very funny. So. A new client brought us a very dirty white cat for grooming. He told us that he had been on a long trip out of the country, and somebody whom he had charged with caring for his cat for several months had performed his duty improperly. Okay, it happens. We shaved the cat completely, bathed her, and saw that she was a nice white cat with a small black spot on her right shoulder. Nice. We informed the owner that the cat was ready, and he said he would pick her up soon. At the time, we had a bather who was a very active cat lover. She worked hard and her only drawback was her hyperactivity on behalf of animals. She announced that she saw an ad on a wall a couple of blocks from us about a lost cat, white with different color eyes. She ran to find this ad and, unfortunately, she found it and called the person who placed it. She asked for details about the cat's appearance, and the woman on the other end of the line insisted that there were no spots on her cat, and that her cat had one blue eye and the other one nearly white because of a cataract. So, it was definitely not her cat. Soon, the owner of the cat picked it up from our clinic, and I almost forgot about this small adventure. It was a surprise when the woman from the ad came to our office and asked for the address of the gentleman who had picked up the cat. For what reason? She hoped that the cat might be hers. Again, we discussed the color and the black spot on the right shoulder and about the color of the cat's eyes. There was a significant discrepancy between the description of her lost cat and the cat we had bathed and groomed. We refused to provide her any information about the man who brought us the cat in question because we are obliged to maintain the privacy of our clients. We recommended that she go to the police and ask the detective to provide us with an official order to release the information. I'm not sure why, but the woman didn't want to do this. She started crying, then became hysterical, and we had to call the police. The officers told this woman almost the same thing we had told her. Um, they said to appeal to the court, and then we would see what could be done. Thanks to the female officer, this hysterical woman left our office. The next day, she came back with the same demand and with the same result. It was only after her third visit that she realized her tactic wasn't working. We did not hear from her for a couple of weeks, and then I got a subpoena from Small Claims Court. It is not a pleasant thing, I would say, to get a subpoena, even if you know what you even when you know that you have behaved correctly. It was almost a month before the small claims court hearing. Who knew what would happen there? I had never been to court before. Then I got an invitation from a TV show, Judge Judy, if I remember correctly. The invitation from the popular TV show explained that according to their rules, it does not matter how the TV court rules. They will pay the fines for the losing side either way. Also, they offered a free flight and a free stay in L.A. during the three days the show would shoot. I wondered, should I accept the offer? It was obvious that the antidotal situation of, this, of the dispute had caught the TV producer's attention. I started watching the show for several days to understand how it might work for me. What I gathered from the series was that they would probably try to fashion the outcome of the TV hearing in an unexpected way. 
So, I might be presented as stupid. I was sure that I had done everything right and that the regular court would see it. But I wondered if I should take this situation and display it on a show, the purpose of which is not the pursuit of the truth, but the pursuit of fun and entertainment. I did not know what to do. On the one hand, there is no such thing as a bad advertising, and participating in a popular television show for free might bring our, our company more business. On the other hand, nobody likes to look foolish, especially in front of a large audience. While trying to make the decision, I missed the deadline for my response and started to feel better. The situation had resolved itself. The day of the regular court hearing came. I dressed as officially as I could, took all the papers and documents that might be needed during the fight for truth, and got to the court more than an hour early. I found the waiting room for the case and started waiting. The woman who sued me also appeared ahead of time. Bureaucratic processes are never quick. The woman started talking to anyone who would listen to her. As a result, even before the hearing, everybody in the courtroom knew that she was crazy. The secretaries, the security guards, the clerks, they all tried to, tried to avoid her story about how this gangster, a.k.a. me, killed her disabled daughter's chance to go to Harvard. This will all make sense in a second. Finally, the clerk who had prepared the papers for our case asked her how much damage she was claiming. The woman explained that the missing cat was the granddaughter of a cat who was featured in a movie. I forget the name of the film, unfortunately. And she had planned for the cat to produce kittens, which she would have easily been able to sell for $3,000 each. The cat would deliver three litters of four kittens on average. That comes to 36000 a year, which she would pay for her daughter's education at Harvard, she explained. When the daughter graduates, she will have a salary of... The clerk interrupted her. I see. Your, calculated ap your calculations are absolutely right, he said. How much would you claim today? 40000 at least, the woman declared. Great. But our apologies, the small claims court considers disputes of only up to $5,000. You have to hire an attorney in law and go to civil court. The judge immediately announced, case dismissed. It turns out there was a very simple way to salvage the mental states of everyone involved and to avoid having to argue with this crazy woman. I almost applauded the judge and the clerk. And the case is closed. So throughout the book they have these little uh, illustrations. So, and I just thought that was just such a funny, strange story. Like, some of the people that they meet at the vet's clinics, like this woman who thought that this cat was going to produce all these kittens and make her so much money. I just thought it was so funny. So another really interesting story about a cat, and it's a very short one, but this is an example of sometimes how things don't work out the way that we planned, but sometimes they turn out even a little better. So this one is titled, There Would Be Fewer Good Things If Bad Things Did Not Happen. And there's a picture of a cat here with a lion haircut. It was our mistake. No excuses. We did a bad thing. Instead of brushing the Persian cat, our groomer shaved it. He did a perfect lion cut on this cat. But anyway, the owner was really disappointed. She cried bitter tears. Of course, we did not charge her and gave her a credit, but she was still very angry. We swore that the hair would grow back in several weeks, but she was inconsolable. With all our will, we could not put the shaved hairs back. A few months later, the same woman came to our office, and I expected a bad conversation. No. She came in to thank us for the good idea. Now her cat could not lick its long hairs, and the problem of hairballs had vanished. Also, her clothes were now cleaner, and the life of the cat seemed much more comfortable. For sure, long hair on a cat is the result of human caprice, and keeping the coat in good shape is a difficult task for Persians, especially due to their rounded faces. So I liked that one because this was a case where they shaved the cat in this lion cut, which is really cute, by the way. And at first the owner didn't like it, and she was horrified, and then she realized, you know what, this is better than it was originally. So the last little piece I'm going to read you um, is just this little, a couple of little sections. Um, basically, this is a chapter called People Who Make Me Love Humans. And this is a chapter about a couple of the kind people that they have seen come into the vet clinic. So this is a whole chapter, and I'm just going to read you three little sections here. 
So the first one is, among our clients, there are about a dozen people who do not call themselves rescue activists. They do not even consider themselves to be kinder than the average person. Yet, again and again, they bring six stray animals for veterinary help, pay the bills, and take care of finding them homes. These regular people, without any vain glory, they just cannot pass by animals in need. For some unknown reason or other, people walk down the same street and never see wounded or sick animals, but these people see them and do whatever they can. Be blessed for these kind people. And two examples of these kind people. So the first one. An old lady, well over 80, visits us once a month. She brings us $10 and asks us to spend the money on behalf of orphaned animals. It's not big money, but we want to give back. It is obvious that this woman is short of cash. She probably makes these donations after receiving her monthly pension. But we are afraid to upset her. Once, I proposed that she adopt a kitten, but she refused. I am too old, she said. The kitten might, out, might live another 15 years, and I cannot be sure that I'll live so long. I don't want to leave a lonely buddy behind. So essentially, she just gives them the money with nothing in return, which I think is really sweet. And then this is the final little piece here. A retired police officer comes to us almost every other day. She just plays with the animals who have to stay in the hospital during treatment or those who are waiting to be adopted. After her visits, even the deeply depressed animals feel better. After an hour or so, she goes to see her grandsons. So I just thought that that was a great example of the kind of people that they run across in the clinic. You know, on one hand, you've got the crazy woman, like the one that was ranting about the cat. And then on the other hand, you have um, a client that came in that was a little disgruntled about the service because she wanted the cat groomed and they shaved it. But then she realized, you know what? The cat's better off shaved. And then you have cases where you just have people that are just genuinely very kind and love animals and are willing to donate money to this, to this clinic and willing to come in and play with the animals and give them company. And it's just very sweet. So there's plenty of stories like this in this book. Um, there's a couple of sad stories, but for the most part, they're really funny. They're really interesting. Some of them are laugh out loud hilarious. And um, it's really, it's just a wonderful book. And the excerpt in the back really sums up the, the tone of the book. It says, the mystery of real love is that there's no reason for it. It's not an exchange. I'll give you this and you'll do that. Actually, the opposite. Love is the only benefit of love. Most often, the connections between people and their pets are pure love. And that's really what this book is about. So if you love animals and you like little short stories or little, like, um, I guess they're, they're short stories based on truth. They're kind of, it's kind of a memory, um, kind of a, I can't think of the word now, kind of a um, more memory book, um, a memoir. Remember, um, if you like books like that, then I definitely highly, highly recommend this. So again, it's called Smiles, Tears, and Thoughts, and uh, behind the front desk at the vet's office by Ephraim German. So thank you for watching and listening. Bye.